The Philadelphia Union Saturday Night were looking for some payback in the Bronx, but things unfortunately did not go in our favor. Union just faced off against NYCFC, and here on Duke by the River, we're going to discuss this match. That's all coming up next, my Pedos. Eh, dale! Everyone to do by the river the show where we follow everything philadelphia you need with me and parcero philly and if you're returning back or this is the first time viewing do by the river i just want to say thank you for tuning in and please if you could hit the subscribe button hit the bell button for those notifications to know when the next episode of do by the river will be and that's right guys union versus nycfc and to be quite honest with you nycfc is starting to become a little bit of a hate here in philadelphia not to mention the fact that they are new york soccer team but also the fact that we cannot win in yankee stadium a baseball field is really killing us here and the fact that since nyc were inaugurated in 2015 the philadelphia union have yet to find a way to win in yankee stadium why is it you might ask one nycfc have had quality teams since their inauguration just playing on that pitch is is absolutely horrible not only for the union but for any mls team traveling to the bronx the quality of the pitch is not there it's a little bit more wider and it's a little bit more tighter in places that you wouldn't expect but for the union that doesn't give it any excuse because if they want to be a championship team they got to find ways to overcome these obstacles so let's get into this match the formation Kirchner would go with would be a little bit of a surprise as he went back to the 4-2-3-1 we all know very well in union nation and in goal he would stick with matt freeze now matt got the start midweek against the new england revolution as andre blake is still in gold cup play as his jamaicans have reached the semi-finals so congrats to jamaica and andre blake but back to the pitch matt freeze would definitely have a match to forget here he did allow four goals, but two of them were PKs, which we will discuss a little bit later. The last two goals, Matt Freeze might tell you that he probably would want those back again. But the back line could have done a better job to contain the NYCFC attack. I personally am not going to attack Matt Freeze when we're talking about a young 20-year-old goalkeeper who's still maturing and still growing as a player. That being said, I don't expect Matt to start the next two matches. I expect Carlos Coronel to start either one of these Orlando City matches that we have upcoming this week. In the back line, we have Ty Wagner, Austin Trusty, Jack Elliott, and Ray Gaddis. These guys had back-to-back -back matches that really were matches that they're going to want to forget. Ty Wagner... Was pretty quiet to be honest with you in this match really wasn't active in the attack really defensively didn't do much it just wasn't accustomed to what we've seen from kai wagner so far this season I've, i haven't i haven't seen a more quieter game from kai since maybe that toronto fc match in that first game and austin trusty was penalized on that first pk which you know what castellanos which we will also discuss a little later pushed off of austin Austin should he made a better judgment knowing that Jack Elliott was right behind him? Yeah, maybe. Still was a little soft of a PK, but other than that, I thought Austin had a solid game. Jack got beat on that last goal by NYCFC, and he also could have had a better game as well. In all honesty, this back four needs to perform better this upcoming week. Now this week I expect Aurelian Colen, Mark McKenzie, Matt Rial with the Union completing four matches in two weeks. Now in the midfield, the two center defensive midfielders, we had Harris Medunian and Alejandro Bedoya. Ali was penalized on that second PK, which absolutely was the wrong call in my opinion. There was barely any contact by Ali. That was a complete flop by Castellanos. Above them, the attacking midfielders, we had Fafa Pico, Jamiro Montiero, and El Sino. Now, I like the starts of Pico and El Sino's out wide. Those two are, are probably our most dangerous players out wide for us. And it definitely paid dividends in that first half. Pico got a goal, El Sino had an assist. While Montiero not only was a playmaker, but also could track back in the defense, get the ball and push it up and lead the attack. Before the end of the first half, we would see Sergio Santos Gomes come in for El Sino, which got a little bit of a ding up. He would suffer a head laceration and would also go under concussion protocol. Definitely came out a little bit too early. And in the 73rd minute, we saw Fafa Pico come out for Marco Fabian. And Marco got some playing time. And up top as our lone forward, we would see Kasper Shibilko. He would get a goal in this match, but his 
lack of speed definitely evident in this match. This match would definitely start off in the Union's favor, and the first half they definitely looked like the stronger team and would even get the first goal. Seventh minute, Jamiro Montero would send a curling ball into the box, which found Fafa Pico, and with a quality first touch, was able to create some space and shoot a low ball to the far left corner to put the Union up 1-0. On the 22nd minute, Castellanos would start his flopping that we would see all match long. The first controversial call would lead to NYCFC getting awarded their first PK in this match. Maxi Morales would put the ball behind the net on a PK to knock this match up one to one. In the 30th minute after another great run by Alcino down the far right flank, he would be able to service the ball into the center of the box, which would deflect off a defender to find Casper Shabilko, who would volley the ball into the back of the right far net to put the Union back up 2-1. Second half, things would change for the Philadelphia Union. And it all started in the 54th minute when Castellanos again flopped in the box, which this one was a clear no penalty. But Castellanos crying was able to convince the ref that it was a PK. And Maxi Morales would take advantage of a young Matt Fries again Again, to tie this match up 2 to 2. And after that, things would go downhill. In the 71st minute, Castellanos would kill us again. He would take advantage of Ray Gaddis and would find just enough space to get a low ball through on the left hand side past Matt Freeze to put NYCFC up 3 to 2. NYCFC would put the nail on the coffin in the 78th minute with a little give and go passing from Castellanos to Morales. And they would take advantage of Jack Elliott. And it would be a great finish by Castellanos to finish. Finish off the Union 4 to 2 NYCFC up, and that's how they would win. 4-2 NYCFC. Let's start off with our business first. First off, Jim Kirch. Now, he went into this match with the 4-2-3-1, which to me was not the right move. NYCFC would line up in a 5-4-1, and I told you in the preview video, I expected this NYCFC team to bunker down, and they chose to go with five back look. Now, I know Alexander Ring covers a lot of ground from box to box, but I believe that he did the right job starting Jamiro right at the 10 roll. That was a perfect Perfect play there, but I would have rather seen these guys use the 442 diamond. We've seen it being effective with the high press in the 442 diamond. I would rather have seen that than heavy possession in a 4231. And then in the second half, we saw the, the threat out wides with Fafa Pico and Ilcino go away by subbing in Sergio Santos Gomes and Marco Fabian. I'll start with Sergio Santos Gomes because, because me personally, I've seen a decline from Sergio Santos Gomes. I saw some sparks earlier this season but in two matches i've seen a guy who's physically not ready to play and he and mentally he looks like he's in his head a little bit to be honest with you this is a little bit of a concern to me because we know andrew wooten is waiting on the side and he's going to take his spot and where is that going to leave ssg this is something we're gonna have to look to right now i am not happy with sergio santos Combs. and marco fabian he will come in late in this match but again he is not the marco fabian that we expected he really didn't didn't do much and the last the last play of this game was maxi morales stealing the ball from marco fabian like he was an 18 year old youngin who's still learning there's some serious concerns from these two signings of ernst tanner that we saw subbed into this match who jim was expecting to save us but really hurt us. Now, NYCFC. In all honesty, I have nothing against NYCFC. If I was a fan, though, of NYCFC, I would be absolutely embarrassed with the performance that my team put forth. You guys won on two flops. Where's the dignity behind that? Castellanos, you're a fucking joke, in all honesty. That was an absolutely disgraceful performance, not only by him, by also the referees. We've seen two MLS stars, and Alejandro Bedoya and Josie Altador, call out our referees for some BS fucking calls that we have seen. Now, this gets me heated because I, for one, don't like blaming results on the referees. The players and the coaches controls the outcome of the games. It shouldn't be the referees. But honestly, we should have a point at least right now instead of zero. That's in part to do with the referees. Now, I'm not going to put the, all the blame on that. I'm going to give NYCFC the credit they deserve. They were losing at halftime and came out in the second half and came ready to play. They won this game and I give it to them. And we need to improve upon this because a tie 
to New England and they lost to NYCFC, I don't care. You want to be the first place team in the East? You can't walk away this week with only a point. And now this week, we're facing off against an Orlando team who's still fighting for a playoff spot. They're right there at the bottom for that seventh spot. And you know, against us, they're going to want to come out and play. We're still in first place and these guys are going to be hungry. Honestly, what is Jim and these guys going to put out for us against Orlando? Are we going to see the team that we saw this week? Some mediocre play? Some mental mistakes? Or are we going to see the team that came out in the second half of that Red Bull game? Who took the bull by the horns and who knew they were the best team in the MLS? This was a tough loss. This is probably the toughest loss this season thus far. Maybe the Portland game, but honestly, just because this is a, a conference foe and we were winning this match at halftime, and the two flop calls. This one hurts the most. And let's look at the rest of the Eastern Conference. We are still in first with 32 points. DC is right behind us with 31 points. Montreal has 30 points. In fourth, we have Atlanta United with 24 points. In fifth, we have the Energy Drink Team from North Jersey with 27 points. In sixth, NYCFC covers some ground with 26 points. And in last place, TFC with 23 points. Now, when we look at the stats for this match, NYCFC dominated it in every aspect of the stat line. 17 shots, nine shots on target, and 59% in possession for NYCFC. While we had seven shots, only two of them on target with 41% percentage of possession. That is absolutely terrible. And even worse, thanks to my big mouth and my bet with the Cooligans, now I have to eat a freaking cheesesteak with who knows what they want on there, but stay tuned for that because I'm not looking forward to doing my part in a bet I had with the soccer Cooligans. A little heated episode here of Duke by the River, but all is well in Philly. Like I said, we are still in first place. Guys, all is well. Positadelphia mentality has to stay intact. We have Orlando City FC, like I mentioned. These guys are prone to mistakes, as we all know. Let's keep the positivity going, and we are going to get six points this week. But those are my thoughts on the NYCFC match. Guys, in the comments below, let me know what you guys think. Castellanos with the flops. What is your stance on NYCFC as well? These guys are a pest for sure. And I want to know how you feel about NYCFC. And of course, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell button to help me grow soccer here in Philadelphia. And until next time, my dupedos, dupe on.